there's a large majority of the population, and hopefully not you, that believes they'll have time to do something before that big financial explosion takes place. Time to move their money, time to get prepared, time to buy gold and silver. However, I'm going to show you some seismic deadlines in this video, which are not only looming, but will leave little warning when they take place. Coming up. I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver dealer specializing in customized strategy to help you through and after the reset that frankly has already begun. And I'd like to welcome you to Headline News. And I want to start out with what's happening in California. Fire fears push PG&E to black out millions. Now look, this is a planned power outage because of course we know about all the catastrophes because of PG&E's, you know, fires and the equipment. But one of our very good clients sent us in the email that I want to share with you. It's up on the screen because they live 20 miles southeast of Gilroy, where the power was scheduled to be shut off yesterday at noon, and they didn't hear about it until Tuesday night. So they went to Costco, but guess what? By the time there were limitations on what they could buy, and by the time they got to the shelf, most of it was bare. Here's the important part of that email. Your updates are very helpful. The reality of li how little warning we will have when a true emergency occurs hit me yesterday. Everything seemed fine. Then all of a sudden, if we didn't already have the supplies we needed, we were out of luck. And that really is the point. When this next big visible crisis occurs, your options will be closed. I also heard of one of our clients that went out for dinner and when they tried to use their debit card, having a lot of fiat money in their account, the account read zero because the power was, was cut off. So today, because this is a planned crisis, okay, when the power came back on, everybody was all right. But the point is, is that when this next big crisis hits, we are not going to have a whole lot of notice. And there are so many black swans that are swirling around. We all, I, I'm thinking that you all have been paying attention to the trade wars and the tariffs and the currency wars that are happening between the U.S. and China. And one day it's bad news and the next day it's good news and back and forth and back and forth in this crazy game of chicken. But in reality, what's really at risk is the consumer because the consumer is tasked with supporting all of the debt in these markets. So in is um, the question of this headline, and it makes so much sense, is America losing the Chinese shopper? Because there was a time where the American label held a lot of sway in China and those Chinese consumers, which remember, this is, this is the largest growing group of consumers in the world as China shifts into a consumer driven, driven economy. But whether it's in China, where now a lot has to do with the trade wars that they're starting to say, and also the quality in China has, has improved. Well, they're feeling more nationalistic as well, wanting to support their own corporations. And they have a lot of incentive to do that anyway. But we hear a lot about Apple being caught in the crossfire. Well, their sales of smartphones have declined 78% as more Chinese consumers are buying Chinese smartphones. Not a big, not a big surprise, frankly. And of course, we get the news on this great trade deal. Well, and the next thing we know is, nah, 
that China wants more talks before signing any kind of trade deal. And what they agreed to is something that, frankly, they've agreed to in the past. But now what I want to go to are some other headlines because we know that globally and, and particularly, well, not particularly, but globally central banks have pushed interest rates down, down, down. But for those that carry a balance on their credit cards, have your interest rates gone down? Heck no. In fact, uh, credit card rates soar as family debt rises. So those people that carry balances, um, lenders are charging record high margins on credit cards, even as borrowers take on more debts. The increase may seem counterintuitive, but what's happened is, you know, all those free giveaways that they entice you to take on the credit cards with airplane miles and all that kind of 5% back, 2% back, whatever they're giving you back. It's never really free. Number one, it costs the merchant and therefore those fees are cost uh, are transferred to you in higher prices. But all of those freebies didn't really work out quite the way the banks thought that they would. If you are a healthy consumer, in other words, you have a lot of wealth, then most people in that category may pay, may pay off their credit card bills every month. But for those that don't, they're the ones that are paying these record high fees. Lenders tacked on an average margin of 11.2% percentage points, which is the highest margin on record. So part of the reason why I'm talking to you about this is because um, typically I've been concerned about variable rate debt when interest rates start to spike because you know if you're paying like 17 to 27 percent interest which is what they're talking about in here you might want to check your own rates and see what you're really paying it makes it that much harder to get out of debt but what in the world is going to happen when interest rates actually spike okay i'm going to do one more got the timer okay and that is Mortgage rates. We know that mortgage rates, or we think that mortgage rates are tied to the Fed, rent, Fed funds rates uh, or the 10 year bond rate, but mortgage rates aren't as low as some hope because the banks need to make more money. So they are tacking on additional rates there. I'm telling you, we've got a lot of things that are going on here, but when a six figure salary still can't buy a house, because the consumers, the ones that make over six figures, are hobbled by debts. I'm thinking that the consumer is breaking down and we're in trouble. So that's it for these headlines. Stay tuned tomorrow. I'm going to do more. I didn't even get a chance to talk about Brexit, who's, who's, um, whose deadline is set up for October 31st. Though they've now talked about pushing that out even further. Oh my God, they voted on it in 2016. So keep in mind that financial shields are made of physical gold and silver, and we are running out of time. There are way too many things that are going on. We're going to talk more about the repos and the IMF tomorrow. So please stay tuned for that. But until then, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.